Hi there everybody and welcome back again. In this video I'm going to take you through how to calculate moles at equilibrium in order to then calculate a Kc value for an equilibrium. So if you want to calculate that Kc expression you're going to need moles at equilibrium. First off I just want to put a little bit of background behind that. Why do I need to do this? The Kc expression is basically a ratio of products over reactants and it allows you to compare the proportions of each. And then that allows you to determine the position of the equilibrium, whether it's to the right or whether it's to the left. The bigger the Kc, the further to the right that it is. Now, in order to calculate that Kc value for that equilibrium, you need to know what the mole values are whilst the system is at equilibrium. And your starting mole values aren't going to be the same as that because you've got starting mole values for your reactants that you then allow to reach equilibrium, giving you a different set of mole values for everything at the end, once the equilibrium has been established. And if all of these stay constant, then that tells you your equilibrium has been established because the rate of the forwards reaction must be equal to the rate of the backwards reaction. In the exam, at the start of a uh, big KC equilibrium calculation question, They'll very, very often give you your starting mole values and the equilibrium, and then they'll give you a piece of information like this one, where they tell you one of the mole values after the equilibrium has been established. Your task then is to figure out what the other remaining mole values at equilibrium need to be so that then you can calculate Kc. It's a really very common exam question for the OCRA specification. So how do we do it? Well, we need to look at how things have changed for the one that we have the information for. So here we can see that we've gone from 2 mole of the nitrogen and we've gone down, and it's a reactant, so you would expect it to react and go down, to 1.7, which means our change is minus 0.3. That's what our change has been. As a result of that, and seeing that there's a 1 coefficient in front of the nitrogen, we're then able to use this information to find out all the others. Let me show you how we do that. So here, for instance, I've got my hydrogen mole value at the start up here, which is set to 4. These are just random. I've literally just chosen these out of fresh air, but you would look for them in an exam question. And so I want to know what this has gone down to. And again, I'm saying gone down to, I know it's going to change by going down because it's on the reactant side. And 99% of the time, that's how it works. Unless, of course, you've approached the equilibrium from the other direction, starting with something from over here. But that's not as common. So my reactants are definitely going to go down. How much does it go down by? That's the important thing I want to be asking now. Well, look at the ratio between the nitrogen and the hydrogen in the reaction equation it's a 1 to 3. So the hydrogen is going to go down by three times as much as the nitrogen went down by. I don't just do three times this number here and that gives me my answer. What I need to do is 4 minus 3 times 0.3. And that's going to take me to my mole value at equilibrium for the hydrogen. And so that's going to be 0.9, and so that takes me down to 3.1 mole. So you need to use the ratio of the components in the equilibrium to determine how things change by, what they change down by. And so you've got to look for that change in the one that you've been gifted by the question. Over here for our product, we can do exactly the same thing, except because it's a product, remember it's going to go up. So we're going to be producing it. It started off as zero, which is really very common. They may not even tell you that in the exam. You're meant to assume that if you've got mole values at the start for your reactants, that your product didn't have any moles at the start. So you might need to fill in the gaps almost with that piece of information. This then is going to go up. How much is it going to go up by? Well, it's going to go up by twice the amount the nitrogen went down by. So you've got to be careful here a little bit. If this went down by 0.3, this is going to go up by 0.6, which is two times 0.3 because of that one to two ratio. 
And because this started at zero, we have an obvious value here of 0.6 mol for my moles of ammonia at equilibrium. Now that I've got all of my mole terms here, I can start assembling my KC expression. I can just put these mole values in, divided by their volume of the total mixture, and start figuring out what that KC is, along with its units. And we've got some videos on that too, if you want to get some practice. Until next time then, happy revising. Thanks very much for watching. Click the links on screen now to be taken to more of our content on Module 5 of the OCRA specification.